I have been wanting to make jeans for a long time now, but they've always intimidated me. On top of that, denim fabric frays a lot and the thought of zigzagging all around those edges just wasn't very appealing to me. But thankfully, brother was kind enough to send me an overlocker to use next to my regular sewing machine. And that means I can cover the edges of the denim super quickly and focus all my attention on the fit. So I decided to dive in the deep end and just go for it. You can of course buy an existing pattern for jeans, but I find that trying to make my own is a valuable learning process. Plus the average fit of jeans pretty much never suits my body type, so I'll have to make adjustments either way. I started with a pair of jeans that fits me well. I traced all the pieces onto pattern paper and added one and a half centimeters of seam allowance. I also used this opportunity to add an extra pocket to the side of the leg. Before cutting up my nice denim and investing a lot of time, I made a muslin out of cheap fabric. That's basically a quick and dirty version of the pants, skipping all of the details just to make sure the fit is right. And it's a good thing I made one, because <laughs> they don't fit very well. I'm guessing that that's probably because the jeans I used as a starting point had a bit of stretch to it, whereas this fabric and the denim I'll be using later don't have any stretch. So I marked what areas needed to be changed and I adapted the pattern. Then muslin take two. All right, pattern's done. <laughs> it took a lot of alterations, mostly because I don't really know what I'm doing. So it's trial and error, but that doesn't mean I can't get there. So I ended up making five muslins uh, to get to a fit that I really liked. It's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it because Hey, come here. Hello. <laughs> I really think it's worth it because a good fitting pair of jeans is just so nice. And it's hard for me to find them in store because I don't have an average body shape as do a lot of people. So I really took the time. After sewing all of those muslins, I am really excited to get started on the actual denim. So let's do it. The grain direction of the fabric is very important here. You want to place all the pieces in the same orientation, parallel to the edge of the fabric. That might not be the most efficient use of the fabric, but it has a big effect on the final fit of the jeans. I pinned the pieces onto the denim and cut them out. For the pocket lining, I went for a thin cotton with a nice print. I started the construction of the pants by covering all the edges that needed it with the overlocker. And while you can definitely do that with a regular sewing machine, I gotta say that a machine like this makes it a lot faster and a lot more fun. To prepare the front pockets, I sewed the backer piece on top of the lining. I also added a coin pocket to one of the two. I made that by folding the top edge inwards twice and stitching it down. Then I folded the other edges inwards, pinned it onto the pocket and sewed around the edges. To attach the pockets to the front leg pieces, I placed them right sides together and pinned them down. I then sewed along the curve and made little cuts in the seam allowance to help the fabric follow it when I turned it right side out. A line of top stitching keeps the lining on the inside of the pocket. I sewed the bottom of the pocket closed and finally attached the sides and the top to the pants. I added the yoke to the back legs by placing it along the top. Since the yoke is curved, it won't be able to lie flat, but that's exactly the point of the yoke. It adds shape. I stitched it in place and added a line of top stitching to keep the seam allowance flat. Making a zip fly looks a little complicated, 
But if you take your time and follow the steps, it's really not that hard. If you want to know more, I'm planning a separate video with all of the details. For the back pockets, I decided to add some decorative stitching to one of them. I printed my logo at the right size, pinned it onto the fabric, and stitched over the lines. It's not very visible right now, but I'm hoping the denim will fade over time and make that stitching stand out more and more. To construct the back and side pockets, I folded the top edge inwards twice and stitched it down. Then I folded the other edges inwards as well and pinned the pockets onto the back leg pieces. I stitched along the edge to fix them in place. For the back pockets, I made the stitching a little more decorative by adding a second line with a little flare on the top. And it's these little details that really make a pair of jeans special. With all of that in place, it's time to close up the side seams. I chose to use a flat fell seam here, which is a very strong seam that's quite typical for jeans. I did that by placing the front and back leg pieces wrong sides together and stitched it down with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. Then I cut down the seam allowance of the back panel a bit more than half. Now I can fold the seam allowance of the front piece around the remaining fabric and pin it down. A second line of stitching, parallel to the first one, secures it in place. I lined up the crotch seam of the back pieces and sewed it closed. Next up is the seam on the inside of the legs. I lined up the crotch points for the front and back, and then lined up the pant legs after that. Now I could sew all the way from one ankle to the other. I hemmed the bottom of the legs by folding the edge inwards twice and stitching all the way around. The waistband consists of two pieces, so I first sewed those together at the top edge. I used clips to place it on the inside of the jeans and stitched it down with a 1.5 cm seam allowance. I pressed the seam and folded the waistband over to the outside of the jeans. I folded all the remaining raw edges inside and pinned it all the way around. I stitched it down and ended with a top stitch around the top of the waistband to help it keep its shape. For the belt loops, I cut a long strip of fabric and used the overlocker to finish one of the edges. Then I folded the raw edge inwards and covered it with the finished edge. I sold it all down with two lines of stitching and then cut the strip into seven individual belt loops. I sewed them in place with a tight zigzag stitch and then folded them over. I added a second line of stitching for reinforcement. Finally, I folded under the bottom edge and stitched that in place too. I tried making the buttonhole with the automatic buttonhole function on my sewing machine, but the placement ended up right on the edge of the seam allowance inside of the waistband and the varying thickness made it pretty difficult. I guess I should have trimmed the seam allowance back before I closed up the waistband. But Oh well. I ended up making my own buttonhole by stitching two parallel lines of tight zigzag stitches and then sewing a wider zigzag at either end. Then I cut open the fabric in between with my seam ripper. I hammered the button onto the waistband and as a finishing touch I added some reinforcement rivets in the corners of the pockets. I am super proud of these jeans. Not only because I think they look great, but even more so because I learned a lot while making them, including how to make pockets and how to sew a zip fly. They did end up being a bit oversized, and I think that's because the denim has a bit more slack than the muslin fabric I used. 
But even though the fit's not perfect, it's pretty far in the right direction. And they definitely fit my body shape better than any jeans I ever bought in a store. So that's a win for me. And now that I've conquered the hurdle of making my first pair of jeans, I'm pretty sure there'll be many more to follow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.